agreement uh, looking to a different aspect of how the police department and and England works. Yeah, Roger that. I use Direct TV, and they have a very good. You have, I, I think it's free up to a certain point. You can record so many different programs, and uh, in the package that I have with the sports package, I think they throw in a lot of storage. And so I can record all that I want through there. You can rewind stuff, play it forward, uh, pause it. You know, it, it's really just like having a DVR, but maybe even better. And uh, I've been very happy with that. Whenever I want to record something, um, I will. But it's very rare that I even do that. Over. Yeah, you're talking about the recording it to the cloud. Is that correct? I guess so. Yeah, because they, I don't have to download it on my computer. It's in the Direct TV streaming, and I can go back and look at it whenever I want. I can record a series. Like, I used to have all the local news from Corpus Christi uh, pretty much, you know, designated to record every night at 10 o'clock or whatever, and then I could go back the next day and watch the previous day's news. But I don't even do that much anymore because I don't, I just don't watch TV like I used to, and, uh, just uh, don't really have the time to mess with all that, but it's uh, it's pretty good how technology has come along with regards to recording, over. Yeah, I, I gathered uh, all the stuff with satellites, and I was going to go by the wayside. Too expensive when uh, they can uh, stream everything down to you on the uh, local repeater, well, not the repeater, but the, the, your local uh, internet, and it's all coming to new technology, and... Uh, I think we're in the threshold of it right now. Yeah, Roger, that the only time it really makes me or upsets me is whenever there's really, really heavy rain outside. Sometimes I'll lose the signal because I have a, a Starlink. I have the you know Elon Musk, the SpaceX satellite, and it, it's really fast, you know, very fast internet speed, a lot faster than what I could get locally. So that's why I went with that, and it does the streaming very well, but if there's a really, really heavy storm out, I will, it'll pause or it'll, it'll go out, and then I'll miss stuff. So that's the only time that it bothers me, over. Yeah, I'm the same way here. Um, I got so many trees around, I've been trying to cut myself a path. Uh, I'm about uh, an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half uh, east of Birmingham, and uh, I'm... I got to try to go ahead. I got a pretty good outside antenna, but I need a path of when the uh, when the leaves go out and it rains and it uh, it just cuts out the signal. Yeah, Roger that. The internet service is very fast. I get very close to 200 megabytes per second, and that compares to what I used to have before the Starlink. I was only able to get like 10 megabytes per second with the local cable. And now they've installed, uh, what do you call it, fiber optics or whatever. They just recently installed that, but I had already switched over to Starlink, so I haven't even looked back at, you know, what they have available and what it costs and all that. But um, I've been very happy with Starlink, but except for those times when it's really pouring out. But that doesn't happen too often, so I I'm pretty much happy with that. Over. Yeah. Well, it's not like you got it into that. I, I just thought I would mention that there is a box that you can buy. It's $200, and uh, you can hook it up to the outside antenna. Not only record on it, but it's got the guy and it also Bluetooth every TV. Uh, I've got the uh, TV in a ham shack. i got uh, my Bowen uh, with my garage up and above the, above the Bowen. i got an apartment, and my wife's got a painting studio. And I'm able to Bluetooth it to local channels everywhere, and it's a pretty neat little deal. Roger that. That sounds pretty cool. Um, but I, I don't, I don't watch enough TV to even warrant thinking about it. But thanks for the info, Holmes. Man, your signal is really clear down here. I didn't, I didn't get to tell you and uh, the other gentleman that was on before the net how strong you guys were. Who was the other guy? I can't remember. Uh, Steve, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, it was probably Steve. I wasn't sure. Um, but, man, both of you guys were coming in really, really strong, and I wanted to say that, but I never really got a chance to, to do that over. Yeah, you're coming in 20 over 9 in, 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 uh, in uh, Alabama. Yeah, Roger.
Now uh, you're also 20 over, sometimes 25 over, right in that area. Don't you have a, uh, a beam? A what? What kind of antenna you got? I have a horizontal quad loop. It's about 30 feet up in the air, and it's a full 160 meter length uh, wire. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's working for you. Uh, I got it just in the home brew, uh, a fan type uh, inverted V for 40 and 80. I, I got a single fed coax with no ballum and running into the thing. And I got a 160 feet of wire, and he is pretty good. So, but uh, it's also resident on 40 and 80 meters. Yeah, Roger, that. The thing I like about my antenna is I have about. It's, it's about 560 feet long all the way around. And so I have a, I guess it's around what? Um, uh, probably around 150 feet or something like that, I would guess. So yeah, maybe a little under 150. Uh, that is right along the shoreline of Baffin Bay. So that, that lobe that goes out over the bay is just, you know, straight signal to water. And that gets me across the, you know, Gulf of Mexico to other countries very well. Over. Yeah, you're at Corpus Christi, correct? I'm at Baffin Bay, about 40 to 50 miles south of Corpus Christi. I, I'm from Corpus Christi, and I've lived there pretty much all my life. But I moved out here about seven years ago, I guess, for, you know, full time. Uh, bought my place here 10 years ago and really enjoy it here. It's really nice. Well, I retired in uh, 97, we moved up here, and uh, uh, from New Orleans, I'm originally from New Orleans, and my wife's from here, and her uh, parents got sick, and I had 32 years in where I worked, and we came up here, and I had a, the hardest thing was uh, putting all my station back together, and uh, I, I guess I'm a little bit of a miser, because I wouldn't go ahead and, and dig the hole for my tower, I got there with an entrenching tool and got in there and my wife said every time she come out in the morning she see less and less of me so finally she saw dirt coming out of the hole and figured I was okay. <laughs> yeah, Roger that. I used to go through New Orleans a lot. Um, I used to fish down in Venice. I'd go to the very southern tip of Louisiana where the Mississippi River met the, the Gulf of Mexico. And we would go out yellowfin tuna fishing out of uh, Venice uh, once or twice a year for a few years. And, man, you all have some good fishing down there, over. Yeah, but it went dead. I remember a time when I, when I was a teenager, if we come in less than 100 fish, uh, that was a bad day. I believe it, yeah. And, and, you know, it used to be that, what was that place called? The Nump, I think, uh, or the Hump, one of those. Uh, there used to be some huge cows, like 200 plus pound tuna that would go every winter through the, over the lump or the hump, I forget what they called it, and it was consistent every year it would produce, and then all of a sudden it quit producing, and you, you could catch one every now and then, but not as much as it was, you know, like years before, and uh, yeah, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's, I remember watching tuna jumping out of the water one time, it was incredible. They were just jumping out all around the boat, you know, two, three, four, even five feet up in the air, um, chasing flying fish and stuff, and man, that was a beautiful spectacle. And I remember one time a flying fish was trying to get away from a bunch of tuna, and there was about eight or ten tuna that jumped out all at the same time. It looked like a Christmas tree of tuna fish. They were just one at the very top, and then two or three a little bit less, you know, below that, and just all the way down to the water. It was a lot of them. I could not believe it. And it was one of the best things I ever saw when I was out there on the water, over. Well, the biggest thing I saw was a manta ray. And I hooked into this thing, and uh, we were out of Hopedale, which is uh, a little east of uh, where you're talking about. Anyway, uh... My brother kept telling me, cut your line, you got a stump or something down there. And I kept reeling in and said, no, it's not a stump. And all of a sudden, this thing about six foot across broke the water. And my brother almost had a heart attack. He thought that thing was coming in the, bed, in the boat. Yeah, Russ, I remember fishing a pier out of, uh, off of Padre Island called Bob Hall Pier. 
Um, we were there fishing.